Hey, Ryan, how are you doing today? Hey, doing great. Broadcasting from the secret Smart Collective headquarters in Gainesville, Florida. Excellent, excellent. I, I wanted to talk with you this episode about the pesticides that are currently allowed in Florida and a little bit about those to give our listeners on smart science and the marijuana solution a little more background about the pesticides, what they are. Absolutely. I'd be more than happy to talk about this. It's quite a hot button topic actually in the state right now. Absolutely. And what is the allowed pesticides right now per Florida's regulations? Well, as you know, the Office of Medical Marijuana Use and the Department of Agriculture are still in discussions to produce a full list of allowable pesticides. But for the time being, there are actually only eight products that are approved for use on medical cannabis in Florida. And what are those eight products? Yeah, so we, we're representing uh, six different companies here. Um, one of the companies has uh, three products and five products. Companies have one product on the list. We'll lead off with the company that has uh, three products on this list, Excel Ag Corp. Their USA headquarters is in Miami, although I do believe that their parent company is from out of the United States. All three of their approved pesticides, Cyclops, Aramite, and Nemakill, blend of natural non-synthetic certified organic oils, such as clove oil and cinnamon oil. And and when you use these in different concentrations, they're excellent for controlling different problems that you would see in cannabis. Uh, So Cyclops in particular is a fungicide, so something you would use to control things like powdery mildew or uh, pythium. Aramite is an insecticide, as you can probably tell from its name there. It uh, takes care of all different kinds of mites, aphids, white flies, and, and different beetles. And then their product, Nemakill, it's uh, an organic nematicide. And these are typically uh, different types of either roundworms in humans or for plants, uh, different uh, nematodes that will eat foliage like the, uh, the, the cyst nematode and the root knot nematode. Uh, and so all these products uh, together in synergy provide a very broad spectrum protection for the cannabis plant. Next up on the list is Brant Consolidated with their product uh, Brant Organics Aleo. Now this product is a broad spectrum uh, bactericide and fungicide that uses uh, a main base of organic garlic oil, actually. As a bactericide, a fungicide, this would be great for controlling something very prevalent in cannabis, right? Botrytis or gray mold. Uh, It also helps control white mold and the introduction of different bacterial strains such as Pseudomonas. That's a really nasty one. That's a really nasty one. Yeah, for sure. And they're, they're based out of uh, Fresno, California. The, the next company is interesting, and they're starting to see a trend with a few of the companies that are left on the list here that are actually marketing specifically for uh, people that go grow cannabis or industrial hemp. This company is called Can Care, right? C-A-N-N, like cannabis, hyphen care. And their approved product is called Pro Can Care Synergy. Pro Can Care Synergy uh, falls into the class of being a miticide, an insecticide, and in different concentrations, also a fungicide. Um, so spider mites, aphids, caterpillars, uh, powdery mildew. Now, the main ingredient in their formulation is called sodium laurel sulfate. And this is very different from a very similar compound, SLES. So these, those two compounds get mixed up commonly. Uh, SLES can be definitely toxic to humans, but SLS is a completely separate compound and has been found to be safe for um, commercial use in food products. 
It's basically an organic salt, and its action works as a surfactant. It uh, coats the cannabis or whatever crop you were using it on and, and gives it a protective layer. And that, uh, they're a good company out of Hillsboro, Oregon. Next, we have a Florida company from Placido, Florida, is Global Soil Solutions with their product, Insecta Pro. And this is actually supposed to be used as a soil amendment, although they do claim that it will dissolve in solution and can be used uh, as a foliar spray. And this is by far the largest blend of natural organic oils that we've seen. It's got uh, citronella oil, lemongrass, garlic, cinnamon, peppermint, uh, several other natural oils. And uh, so mixed into the soil before planting or laid on top of the soil post-plant is great uh, at controlling insects. The next company here is Rockwell Labs. Uh, Rockwell Labs is out of Kansas City, Missouri, and their approved product for use on medical cannabis in Florida is called Ecovia 3-in-1 Concentrate. The 3-in-1 part comes from it being another broad-spectrum product that's good for uh, mites, insects, and also funguses. This is a, another organic product. All of these products are organic. Uh, they use a blend of thyme oil, peppermint oil, and cinnamon oil in their product. And uh, this is another one of the companies that you see uh, specifically marketing a product towards cannabis. That's very interesting that uh, these large chemical producers are, are recognizing the growth in, in agriculture of the cannabis industry. And then finally on our list, we have uh, – a company listed as Process Managers LLC, but you'll probably have more luck looking them up as Pro New Tech. That's P R O N U T E C H. They're a company out of Winchester, Kentucky, and their approved product is called Pro New Cure H Y. That's a mouthful. They are using organic salts as their base in an effort to strictly control nematodes. And so uh, applying the salts uh, in an effort to uh, destroy foliar nematodes or not nematodes, you know, other versions of roundworms and, uh, and destructive parasites that might get into the cannabis crop. Let's see, that's another product that's main uses as a soil additive rather than a foliar spray. And they do tell you that you can mix it in with your soil or use it uh, post-planting as a surface application just uh, to make sure to use lots of irrigation to make sure that it's saturated throughout the soil. So these are the products that we have on our list right now. I'd like to point out that these particular products are available for use on medical cannabis because of a special rule from the Environmental Protection Agency. If you want to really want to drill down, it's called FIFRA 25B, the Federal Insecticide, Fungicide, and Rodenticide Act. It states that for minimum risk pesticides, if you meet certain criteria, you can be exempt from registering with the EPA for specific use. What we're going to see is that these products that are all natural have expedited approval because of their very minimal risk consideration by the EPA. And as other pesticides are suggested or to be put into use, they will have to be approved through the Environmental Protection Agency and then placed onto the list as approved for medical cannabis in Florida. Are all of these safe that are currently allowed to be used? Yes. The, the eight current pesticides that are allowed for use are regulated. Well, not regulated. They are checked or verified by a third-party independent organization. It's called the OMRI, the Organic Materials Review Institute. They're out of uh, Eugene, Oregon, and they're an independent review organization uh, for the EPA to uh, basically let them know, yes, these pesticides 
do meet the minimum risk qualifications and they do qualify for that uh, fee for a 25B exemption. There is some order of safety watch going on over this. Just wanted to make sure that everyone knew is that pesticides that we're talking about are definitely safe to be used right now. And we're just waiting on the full list, which should be coming out by summer. Right. We had the Office of Medical Marijuana Use workshop on pesticides in, at the end of February. And we have a few others coming up in the meantime, but they've also now announced a second pesticides workshop. And when is the second pesticides workshop? The second pesticides workshop, this is a public workshop, is going to be March 23rd. That's a Friday, I believe, in Tallahassee. It's the same building where the first one was, the Betty Easley Conference Center. Thank you. As always, Ryan, your wealth of information. This is really important stuff to get out there to the people because a lot of people have been asking me how do the MMTCs mitigate pests and other types of you know, harmful contaminants, biological ones that could get into the plants. And we have just answered that for them. Thank you, Ryan. Well, always happy to uh, be available to the Marijuana Solution Podcast for Smart Science. We're trying to look out as best we can for the patients of Florida, make sure uh, that they get clean, effective medicine. And so far, it's thumbs up. I couldn't agree more. Thanks. All right. The Marijuana Solution would like to remind you to check out our sponsors after the podcast. We're going to have links to them in the description. Our sponsors are True Leave, Sunshine Cannabis, The Smart Collective, Minorities for Medical Marijuana, and We Are Rare.